Hi, Internet. Hi. Um, in light of making a series of videos about everyday feminism, I thought it would be a good idea if I defined what feminism meant for me. When I talk about feminism, I'm talking about true equality between men and women. Well, that sounds wonderful. For me, it's not about punishing men or hating on men. No, why would it be? Why would you say that? It's about, about creating a society where men and women are treated as equals and men and women are not treated differently based on their sex or, or treated in a certain way based on their gender. We've already got something better than that. It's called democracy. That's where everyone gets treated equally. No matter if you're a man, a woman, fat, skinny, gay, straight, you get the drift. Um, that it, I feel like it... Maybe it doesn't go without saying, um, but it's important to say that feminism is equality for men and women. Why isn't it called masculism? So that um, it's not just that women are treated better, but that they are treated in the same way as men. Um, a good example of feminism for me, um, or the need for feminism, is street harassment. A woman walking down the street and getting catcalls or wolf whistled. Really? Is, I mean... Not only is the woman being treated as a sexual object, which is not okay, but a woman is being singled out and treated differently to her male counterpart based on gender. I know guys that have been walking down the street and had the shit kicked out of them. I bet a wolf whistle sounds alright to them. That's not to say that men don't experience street harassment, but um, I feel like when women walk down the street and get treated like sexual objects, they're being singled out based on their sex and even though sometimes the perpetrators or society as a whole will say that it's harmless or it's a compliment. It is a compliment. In fact, what it is is gender inequality for me. That's, that's how I see street harassment. Yes, but we're talking about wolf whistling here. We're not talking about street harassment. Um... Oxfam reported that 70% of the world's poorest people are women. Across the globe, women represent 18% of um, members of parliament. Only 18%. In Australia, um, the female population is just over 50%. And yet in the current federal Abbott government, there is only one female representative in, in the Abbott ministry. Well, actually, there are two females in the ministry, but I think it's important to look at why this is the case. In the last federal election in Australia, there were 1,717 candidates. 470 of those candidates were women. So this is not about women being held back in the race. This is about women not turning up to the starting line. Like, that's, that's nuts when you think about it. Over 50% of Australians are female, but there's only one female representative in, in the federal cabinet. That's not to say that men can't represent women, and on the same token that women can't represent men. But if you think about that statistically... That's crazy. That's crazy. And, and, and I mean, it's not to say, like, is that to say that there, there are significantly less intelligent and capable women and that's why there's only one woman in uh, the... the t -t -t Today, Junior! Federal government? No. There are just as many capable women. But being capable of something is a lot different to actually doing that thing, isn't it? I mean, of course not. No. It's about inequality. It's uh, feminism is there to help address things like this. Surely you see the absurdity of, of what you are whinging about. You just mentioned that just over 50% of the Australian population are women. So presumably, just over 50% of the Australian electorate, that is people who vote, are women. Vote for women. Um, last year, the Australian Bureau of Statistics um, released some results about gender pay gap inequality in Australia. Um, in one of the states, the gender pay gap was as big as 23.9%. I'm not even going to have this argument with you. This has been debunked so many times. The gender pay gap is all about choice. And babies. But mostly choice. 
gets down to as low as 9.9%, I think, in the ACT. But, like, that's that's enormous. When, you're, when we're talking about um, media enterprises um, at an executive level, so, like, CEOs and things like that, of all the major media outlets, including ABC, SBS, Channel 9, Channel 7, 83 to 100% of people at that high le executive level are men. Again, is that to say that because there aren't enough intelligent, capable women? No, but again, having the capability to do something and doing something are completely different things. Now, the fact that there's a small percentage of women who hold the top jobs in this industry means that women are not held back from holding the top jobs in this industry. It's just more of them need to do it, so go do it. Of course not. Dr. Alison Jewell wrote a book called Shush Shushing the Girls. Um, it was based on some research and some studies that she conducted. Well, this should make a lot of sense then. About um, boys and girls in the classroom at school um, and about the linguistic dominance of boys. She discovered in this study um, some an amazing stats that the ratio is about nine to one in like boy linguistic representation over female representation. Boy linguistic representation is nine to one on women's linguistic rep. What the fuck does that mean? Seriously, what does that mean? Um, there have been studies that have been conducted that um, it's a. I think it's like the one third rule when women occupy more than one third of the space in media, like print media, or um, in discussions, verbal conversation, both men and women think that females are dominating the conversation or the print space. Well, I've never heard of this rule. I'm not sure that it exists. But let me tell you, if they crap on half as much as you do, of course it seems like they're dominating the conversations. This video's gone for, what, three hours now? One third. If it goes over that one third rule, it seems that women are dominating the space. Yeah, I'm not sure about this rule. It seems pretty crazy. Like, that's pretty crazy. Um, Alison, I can't pronounce her name very well, Bitchell? <laughs> Bitchell. Bitchell? I'll put a link down below. No, let's just say it's Bitchell. Um, came up with a test um, that discusses um, the way women are portrayed in pop culture um, and essentially like the three questions of the test are, um, are there at least two female characters? I think you're talking about television shows and movies. Pop culture does not have characters. Pop culture is a, a genre, if you like, that can include television shows and movies. Uh, do they talk to each other? And do they talk about something other than a man? That test, if you if you apply it, has some really elucidating um, messages for how women are portrayed in pop culture and in the media. You know, there's for me, feminism has such an integral part to creating an equal society, um, and it's really about putting. It, creating an equal playing field. We have an equal playing field. It's called equality of opportunity. It's a fundamental aspect of a democracy. An equal level so that women have the same representation as men, so that um, it's not perceived that women are dominating conversation. So you want to tell us what to perceive now? <sighs> Jesus. And what if we don't conform? Is that a thought crime? When they participate more than one third of the time, it's so that young girls get taught uh, when growing up that they have an equal right to conversation and space and, uh, and to be as boys do. Of course they have the same right. Who says that they don't? Um, for me, feminism is not about promoting women or... Um, or making society uh, better for women. 
in and of itself. It's about, it's about creating an equal society. Yes, you keep saying that. Equal society. You are all about equality. And I truly believe that that benefits men and women. Yeah, of course. Equality would benefit men and women just as much as each other. Where are you going with this? Um, it's... Uh... While it's not about promoting women per se, there is inevitably some loss to the privilege that men experience if you create a truly equal society. Ah, I see where you're going with this. Let me explain something to you. In Australia, we have equality of opportunity. You have the same opportunity, the same chance to strive for something, to achieve things that I do, that men do. What you're talking about, however, is not equality of opportunity. You're talking about equality of outcome. They're two completely different things, and they cannot work hand in hand. Because with equality of opportunity, everyone has the chance, has the right to strive for something. You have the right to go and get a better job than me and to earn more money than me. If you, if you work hard and you earn it, that's fair enough. You've earned it. With a quality of outcome, it's less about what you're entitled to at the start of the day than what you're entitled to at the end of the day. So no matter how hard I work and how hard you work, at the end of the day, we should have equal benefit. Now, as I said before, equality of opportunity is something that, that nearly always goes hand in hand with democracy, where equality of outcome has more often in the past been a major trait of socialism and communism. Do you happen to know who this guy is? On a feminazi cunt. Close. Because at the moment, men have more privilege and more... Um, more access to, to high-level jobs or the spaces are created in society that are not very female accessible to a degree. Bullshit. The two female members of the Australian Cabinet prove that women have access to these jobs. The fact that our last Prime Minister, the top job, was a woman proves that women have access to this job. I mean, like, that's a very loaded thing to say and it's not really something to get into right now. No, 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 of course not. Um, but, you know, there's, it's inevitable that with creating an equal society, some men will lose the high level of privilege that they have to make way for equality for women. So what you've said so far is that there's not enough women in the Australian Cabinet. That's wrong. We should change it. There's not enough women in the top jobs in the media industry. We should change it. So the message that I'm getting here is that if there is not the same proportion of women as men in a certain industry, we should enforce change. We should take from the people who, who hold these positions, who have earned these positions, we should, we should take it from them and we should give it to people who have not earned them. Um, as Clementine Ford puts it, 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 it means that men will have to, some men will have to relinquish some of the things that they feel belong to them. Let's just make this clear. Nobody, nobody is a member of the Australian Cabinet because they feel they deserve it. They are a member of the Australian Cabinet because they worked their fucking asses off. And you suggest that we should sack them and give their job to a woman who never even tried to get it. So while feminism for me is not about punishing men or promoting women, it's fundamentally about equality between the sexes, there will there inevitably has to be a bit of give and take on both ends of the spectrum to create an equal society. If that's the, the logic that we're going to use, you know, why stop there? Let's look at other industries. Let's take, for example, the construction and mining industry. There are roughly 1,180,000 people in this industry. 
Now, 13.3% of them are women. Surely this has to change. So under your way of thinking, we should sack roughly 433,000 men from this industry, and we should force, force 433,000 women to work in this industry. Because unless you force them, they're not going to do it, are they? Because at, at the moment, they have the, the right to choose, and they're not working in this industry. On the flip side, you take the, the social work and medical industry. It currently has roughly the same amount of employees, 1,180,000. 77.6% of these workers are females. So in this industry, again, we're going to have to sack roughly 430,000 women and force 430,000 men to take up their jobs. And why are we doing this again? Well, because we need equality. It's all about the Australian cabinet, you know. To, to achieve parity in the Australian cabinet, we need another. We need to sack eight men, and we need to replace them with eight women. So, in order to do this, we've also got to do it to four hundred and thirty thousand people in each of these industries I just talked about. That's ridiculous, isn't it? And not only that, let's look at the Australian workforce as a whole. There are currently around twelve million people in the Australian workforce. 45% of those people are women. So before we even start breaking down industries, we are going to have to take 600,000 men who currently have jobs and sack them. Now there's going to be no replacement jobs for them because the workforce is the workforce. And we've also got to get 600,000 women who currently do not work, who choose not to work, because they don't want to, they don't need to, whatever. It's, it's, it's fine under the present system. They've got every right to choose that. But under your system, no, no, that's not good enough. 600,000 women down the fucking mines with you. Build me a house. Get to work. This is bonkers. Which I think is very important. You know, we shouldn't be valued more or less based on genitalia. Like, it's, it's nuts. Even when you think about the privilege that Australia experiences as a country um, with our, you know, economic wealth and our, it's, it's hard to say social progressiveness these days in light of some of the things that have been going on. Um, but, you know, we are definitely a first world um, country. Like, there's still gross amounts of inequality in Australian society. And I believe that feminism works towards eradicating that inequality. Talisha, you are overthinking this whole thing. You've got to stop thinking about society as men and women and start thinking about it as citizens. We are all people, simple as that. The best person gets the job. You know, thinking about about society in, in segments like this is unhealthy. Anyway, let's just say it all goes your way and all of these things get put into place. What happens the next day when when we get the first claim that there's not enough gay people represented in the cabinet, or there's not enough Chinese people represented in the cabinet, or enough fat people represented in the cabinet? We're fucked then, aren't we? Because we've set a precedent. It's not about um, punishing some people and rewarding others. It's about creating a society where we have equal rights at a very fundamental base level. So at the very start of this video, you said that it is all about equality between the sexes, as in no one should be treated a certain way because of their genitalia or their gender. And now, at, at the end of your, your video, you're saying that men are going to have to give up the privileges that they have to make way for women. What the fuck is that? that that's fucking discriminating because someone has a cock. That's ridiculous. You have gone full circle and you don't even see it. You are suggesting that to achieve equality, we have to discriminate against certain people. Surely you see how fucking crazy that is. On a feminazi cunt. Give me better times, give me better times.
inside